Aside, Pauli, in fact, this hospital has a mammoth task as they try to track down every patient that was in this hospital since the beginning of March to present day. Those are the people that have potentially come into contact with those that are now found to be infected with COVID-19. And that number, as we understand it, is believed to run into about 4,000 or so. So it's a huge task. But more than that, I can't imagine what it would be like working at this hospital right now, knowing that at least 48 of your colleagues are infected. And that's why I want to bring in Mantla Shabangu from Denosa here. Mantla, thanks for joining me. The first thing is, how are nursing staff feeling right now, knowing that these numbers have been rising and they are possibly at huge risk? Uh, good morning to any your listeners at home. Look, the, the workers are very traumatized, to say the least, because what has been happening, they've been raising this issue, begging the employer to protect them before even March, and employer pretending that they are safe wherever they were, while workers knew that they were working under conditions that are appalling when it comes to safety issues. They were not provided with any PPE. And when the first uh, 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 number was pronounced, which was 11, we presented on this platform that we do not believe that that is a true reflection because we knew that all workers here have been struggling in getting PPE. When they, remand, they request the PPE from the management, management will come with a negative attitude, intimidating them, telling them that if they don't want to, to work, they must go, they'll get the sessioners, and all of that. So workers are very stressed as they are sitting at home now, not knowing their status, sitting with their families. And worst of all, as of last night, I received the calls from some members saying management is still calling them to say, when are you reporting for work while you are sitting at home? And we find that that is very insensitive and delinquent, to say the least, because you can't be in the middle of this crisis, start talking about hours on workers who are traumatized at home because of your negligence as a facility who failed to provide them with PPEs. Now, the numbers has gone to 48 now, which we said earlier that this 11 that were said was not a true reflection. Even this 48, we strongly believe it is not the true number of what has happened in this hospital. Because if you look on the rate, the KZ10 uh, uh, positive cases is going. It does not talk to the numbers of people who are dying KZ10. We are already out of 13 in the country. Seven are coming from this uh, province. And, and, and the majority may have died here. Yes. And the majority of that seven, five are coming from this hospital. Now that tells you something has gone wrong in this hospital. The sooner the management accept that, the better. And they must start taking accountability and protect the nurses who are sitting at home frustrated, some not knowing their status, spreading the virus as we speak, because they have not been tested, some of them. Matla, what about the measures that Nedke says that is taken? You know, there was a statement recently, and even the CEO has said or insisted that they've offered the option for nurses to, to quarantine. They're willing to put, up, uh, put them up in accommodation. They're talking about PPE and obviously the screening and testing that's going on. But you're saying now that nurses are still having a problem with PPE. Uh, the, the problem with, the, with these managers is that they look on, on these issues from the offices. They don't look at at the reality situation where the managers, immediate managers who are supervising these workers are talking another language, not what the CEO was saying. I listened to the CEO saying there's no such thing. But we are talking about the reality from his side, why he thinks there's so much outbreak in this hospital, if what he's saying is true. Because he might have secured that PPE, he said it cost him 300 million. And we do not believe that that PPE was used to the best of the workers in this facility because you wouldn't have this situation if that PPE was used. We are still retaliating that this institution failed to protect the workers because workers are struggling because of that and to a point that some are intimidated that if they feel unsafe, they must go and test themselves. And we don't buy this story that the CEO is saying they are willing to assist the workers. And we want to take them on on that one, that they must start by taking all these workers in a safe place, quarantine them for the 40, 14 days as it was, it was done with the members who were taken from China. This institution must do that to its employees to show that they are serious about protecting these workers. You would have seen the health minister's uh, tweet yesterday and him calling on the provincial health department to engage more with management with the possibility of closing down more 
of this hospital over and above what's already been done. Do you think that's going to be enough to contain the spread? Our view is that closing a, a part of the hospital is not going to solve the problem because we believe that the spread of the virus has gone astray in this hospital, so they must close the whole hospital down, fumigate the whole thing, and then take it from there. But for now, we do not believe that there is anyone who must be risked to come and work in this hospital because you don't know what you are dealing with here. So if the, the minister is serious about dealing with this issue. He needs to set an example about this hospital, close it down, so that their friends who are still continuing with this misbehavior, they must know that when they misconduct, their hospital will be closed down until they comply in protection of the workers, because this spread is not affecting St. Mary's. As I'm speaking to you, people who died here, some of them are living in, in locations, some are living in rural areas, and how many people they've contaminated because of the negligence of the hospital. And some have not been traced as we speak because the hospital is taking a posture that they want to close part of the, the, the hospital and start continuing with the service as all is normal. This hospital must be closed down until they comply and it must be fumigated for workers to be safe. And we want to retaliate this arrogance shown by NetCare management. If they continue to call workers from home to come and expose themselves here, we want the Department of Labor to come on board because these workers are supposed to be taken on leave because they got sick in the hospital because management failed to protect them. So they cannot then be fault and it is made that it is their doing that they are now sick at home or they are positive or they are suspects. Now they must pay those hours. They have nothing to do with those hours. Employer must take responsibility in this thing. Thank you very much, Mantla Shabangu. And in fact, one of the important points that he mentioned there is that those that were at this hospital have gone back to townships and other rural areas. Also, one of those being Tolakele Shandu, the teacher from Umlazi, who died here last week. And something else that we, we're waiting to hear today is what exactly will happen, whether parts of this hospital will be closed, whether the entire hospital will be shut down. Mm. Hopefully we'll get some clarity on that when the KZN Premier holds a media briefing later this afternoon.